type of fiber that we use is critical. We can't just simply load in cloth or different fibers that may be attractive for physical purposes as far as strength. We need a fiber that fits the cavity cross-sectionally. We need a fiber that'll touch the gel coat and touch the upper mold that you'll see when we close it down. You must fill the cross-section of the laminate and this helps to control the resin flow front. Very critical part of the process. Now, over the last several years, we've been offered a variety of, of uh, different types of fibers from the fiberglass manufacturers. The two most prominent that are used in the light RTM process are those that have a core. Let me zoom in a little bit on these types of fiber materials. Here you've got chopped fiberglass on the top. Turn it over, you would have chopped fiberglass. But the key is, in the center, in this case, there is a polypropylene felt. So we have kind of a sandwich construction in the fiber where the felt is going to help spring or create loft and, and push the glass to the top of the mold and to the bottom of the mold. Now the other thing is that these materials form. They take shape and they have memory. Absolute brilliant materials. We, for many, many years, we did not have a luxury like that. We had to cut and tuck and, and fold and overlap, but now we've got materials that take shape. That is a real blessing. That's been available to the industry for, say, the last 15 years or so and has made a night and day difference in loading fiber. So this type, as I say, has the polypropylene type of felt in the middle between the skins of fiberglass. There is another type as well. In this case, again, chopped fiber, chopped fiber, and then it has a knit in the center, which may be difficult to see on the camera there, but it is a knit of fiberglass kind of springing in the center. So it creates that same lofting effect, pushing the fiber out to both sides of the mold, but it's all fiberglass. Now that forms even easier and takes shape. That's there you can take and mold that shape right in. So in a moment, we'll ask Don to help us again, and when he does, He's going to load fiber over this entire mold surface. Now the thing that's unique about the, the RTM light process is the level of detail that you can get. Look at this shape. Look at these little pruning. These are the uh, sink basin outlets, as it were, on the bottom of the sink. But we're able to form the fiber right around these types of details, these small intricate changes in geometry. We're able to pick all that up with RTM light. We're able to take in this shape. Now the only limit that we have is that we can't have it return on itself or be die locked. We have ways around that. We can put inserts in the mold and we can actually mold die locked parts. What we're gonna demonstrate for you today is not die locked. The mold has simply come apart and the part simply comes off the mold without being locked on as it were. I think you understand what I'm saying is if, if this shape were hourglass and, and it wouldn't slide straight up out of the mold. All the surfaces on here are not die locked. There's no hourglass shapes. They all lift right off, and that's an important design feature when you're considering parts for the process. Mind you, if you have something that's die locked that's by design to fit something else, has to have it, talk to us. We have a way to do that, but for most applications, you avoid die locks whenever you can. You want angles of draft to be at least a half a degree, but we like to see two to three degrees of positive draft, enabling parts to slide off most easily. Straight, perfect vertical walls can be problematic as well as a die lock. It's, I mean, it's in nearly the same category. So we want draft. As you can see, this has a tremendous amount of draft, making it very easy to demold. And even these surfaces may not be able to see it on the camera, but there is degrees of draft on each of these areas here. So next, we're going to ask Don to come in and help us, and we're going to load this with fiber. Okay, now we'll have Don loading fiber. Now the fiber that we've chosen for this demonstration is that example that I gave earlier that is an all fiberglass construction. So we have chopped fiber, we have chopped fiber, and we have a knit of fiberglass in the center. So we have a sandwich construction, and then all those three layers are stitched together, and that stitching allows it all to stretch and form. Now let's watch Don just see how easy it is for him to load the fiber into this shape. 